My name is Lee Finnegan. I am a fourth year medical student and a uh, content creator and USMLE tutor with Med School Coach. And here is this week's question of the week for USMLE step one. A 67 year old man with a history of hypertension, type two diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and a myocardial infarction treated with coronary artery stenting presents to the emergency department with worsening dyspnea and orthopnea. On exam, his heart rate is 125 beats per minute his respiratory rate is 31 beats per minute, is 31 breaths per minute, and his blood pressure is 106 over 65. On echocardiogram, his left ventricle is dilated and has an ejection fraction of 35%. As a result of the increased volume of fluid in the left ventricle, his heart releases a substance that promotes natriuresis, diuresis, and vasodilation and counteracts myocardial fibrosis. Which of the following enzymes is responsible for degrading this substance? A, bradykinin. B, angiotensin converting enzyme, C, CYP19, or D, neprilysin. So this is a pretty classic step one question in that it gives you a whole bunch of clinical information that you don't actually need to answer the question at all. Um, you know, we're told that as a, you know, this man, we, as we go through his history, uh, we find that he has a lot of risk factors for heart failure, and we do find that he is indeed in heart failure. Um, but we need to know is, uh, so we know that his left ventricle is dilated and that it's therefore releasing a substance. And we're told what that substance does, but not what that substance is. And then we need to know which enzyme degrades that substance. So all we need to know is which enzyme is secreted by the heart in response to, um, we need to know which enzyme is secreted by the, response, by the heart in response to increased fluid in the ventricle or increased volume in the ventricle. And that substance promotes natriuresis, diuresis, and vasodilation and counteracts myocardial fibrosis. So we need to identify the one, um, we need to identify the substance that it secretes that does that. And then we need to know what degrades that substance. So first of all, this man has heart failure with reduced injection fraction. So just briefly, uh, that's, this, is, uh, this is characterized by ventricular systolic dysfunction. So the ejection fraction is the proportion of the blood that is the percentage of the blood that's in the ventricle that's squeezed out with each um, systolic squeeze. And uh, in this one, the ejection fraction is less than 35 or 40%. And as we see in the question, this guy's uh, ejection fraction is 35%. So he has heart failure, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Um, it is characterized by eccentric hypertrophy and ventricular dilation. Um, and uh, it can present with, if it's left-sided, it can result, present with pulmonary edema, which causes dyspnea, which is one of the presenting symptoms that this guy had. And if it's right-sided, then it can present with hepatic congestion because whatever is immediately previous to the ventricle that has, that has the problem is going to get congested because the fluid is not being pumped out of the ventricle, so it's kind of backing up and backing up. So that's why this guy is presenting with worsening dyspnea and orthopnea, because he has a bunch of fluid in his lungs, because his uh, left ventricle is not pumping it, pumping it out appropriately. But none of that is really necessary for answering this question. Really, the only important thing is that we know that his left ventricle is dilated which we're told. We don't even need to figure that out based on his symptoms. His left ventricle is dilated, and as a result of that increased fluid in the left ventricle, his heart is releasing a substance that promotes natriuresis, diuresis, vasodilation, and counteracts myocardial fibrosis. That substance is a natriuretic peptide. So in response to um, myocardial stretch, increased angiotensin II, or vasoconstriction, the heart releases pro-ANP and pro-BNP. These are atrial natriuretic peptide and brain natriuretic peptide, um, or atrial natriuretic peptide and B-type natriuretic peptide. Um, they've changed the name from brain to B-type because brain makes no sense. It's not secreted by the brain, it's secreted by the heart. Um, so that is, uh, those substances are then activated into ANP and BNP. Um, and ANP and BNP then have all of these active actions. It is also important to note that um, ANP is secreted by the atria and BNP is secreted by the, vent by the ventricles. So, um, so these natriuretic peptides bind their receptors and they have a variety of, of effects. On the kidney, they promote natriuresis and diuresis. In the blood vessels, they promote va vasodilation. In the heart itself, they are antihypertrophic and antifibrotic, so they prevent adverse remodeling. And in, the sympathetic, and in the CNS, they inhibit the sympathetic nervous system. So it makes sense why we would want all of these things to happen if our ventricles are dilated, right? Our ventricular dilation tends to indicate fluid overload, right? You have more fluid than your heart can manage to deal with. So 
that's where natureuresis and diuresis come in. We get rid of some of that fluid. Vasodilation so that we can expand the blood to expand the blood vessels to accommodate all of that additional fluid. Antihypertrophy and antifibrosis because the heart can adversely remodel if you have, you know, ventricular dilation leads to, like we said, eccentric hypertrophy, which is how you get heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So you have that eccentric hypertrophy, which makes room for more of those, um, which makes room for all of that extra fluid to sit in the heart, which is not what you want. Antifibrosis as well. And inhibition of the sympathetic nervous system, because the sympathetic nervous system obviously kind of counteracts all these other effects, in particular vasodilation, right? And the sympathetic nervous system, as we know, also promotes adverse remodeling and things like that in the heart, which is why we treat so many cardiac conditions with beta blockers. Um, so these, uh, these natriuretic peptide, ANP, which is secreted by the atria, and BNP, which is secreted by the ventricles, are degraded by neprolysin. Neprolysin degrades uh, these, um, degrades ANP and BNP into their inactive components. So um, that is the answer to the question because we, we've determined what, the, uh, which, what peptide we're referring to. In this case, since it says it's released by the, um, by the ventricles, uh, or his heart releases a substance. So it could be either ANP or BNP. We don't know which one it's referring to, but it doesn't matter because they do the same thing and they're degraded by the same substance, which is neprolysin. Um, this is also becomes clinically and pharmacologically important because there are drugs that, that inhibit neprolysin. So they inhibit the breakdown of ANP and BNP and allow for the promotion of all of those good effects that those have in people who are having, um, in people with these kinds of problems. And so that is the answer to this week's question of the week.